All right, so welcome guys. Thank you for joining me today here at this amazing replica of the Chinese space station. It's called the Meng Tian, which is dreaming of heaven. It's amazing. This particular um, replica uh, is exactly the same as the one that is flying about 400 kilometers above the Earth. It's important to remember that this is the second space station that is suited for long time habitation. Now, this is important for a very important aspect. Only a few days ago, the laboratory module was launched from China and actually connected to um, the space station and is being suited right now to start working on experiments. The thing is, the life of this space station is, uh, uh, is going to allow for about 1,000 experiments of all kinds. There are experiments on um, vegetation, there are experiments on materials, there are experiments on life uh, in the, well, microgravity, not zero gravity, but microgravity. So the ability to stay on the space station for a long time is quite important. And since it's the second one, and it's the one that is going to be uh, in space for the longest, is going to be very important for breakthroughs that will benefit mankind. Now, this particular replica right here took about three months to uh, manufacture. It's, uh, it's huge, it's gigantic, it's exactly the same dimensions. Now, the cool thing is that on the inside, there are about uh, 200 devices that are exactly the same that are being used in space, orbiting 400 kilometers uh, from the ground. Now, there's also about uh, uh, 400 components that they use in this replica that do exactly the same. It's uh, the same components, the same devices that are being used in space. Very cool, in my opinion. Now, when people think about the space station, right, they think, okay, how do they do things over there? Like, how do they do laundry, for example? Well, you gotta remember that water is a very, very rare, uh, a very important commodity when you are in space. So, you cannot do laundry. How do they do it then? Well, basically, they have different sets of clothes and they dispose of them. So, they wear a set of clothes for a certain amount of time and then they put them away and get a new set on. Obviously, when the shuttles go up and down, they will bring some of these uh, discarded clothes uh, down and, uh, well, that's the way that they handle this. Another question that a lot of people ask is, hey, what about uh, food? What do they eat and how does it work? Well, over there, it's very important to think of the, anything that you're going to discard, right? So, uh, thinking about meat, for example, they can't eat meat with bones. It cannot. So, that's one of those things. Or fruits with seeds or, or um, pits. Those things cannot be had in space. So it's a very important thing to remember. Things that don't require water for preparation, as we said, water is very scarce or a very valuable item. So those are not necessary. Now, the other thing that uh, is uh, interesting to know is the menu. The menu that they have at the space station. There are more than a hundred different dishes, more than a hundred different menus that they can choose from which means that the astronauts don't need to repeat a meal on a week. So that's a great thing for them, for the astronauts. Now, <clears throat> a lot of people also ask, well, what about the future of the space station? What's going to happen to the space station once it's completed? It's going to finish uh, its assembly at the end of this year, 2022. And from then on, they are going to have two shuttles going every year with astronauts, people who want to do different experiments, people who want to, well, do different uh, jobs in the space station. And there will also be two shuttles going with cargo. 
So with either supplies or uh, repair kits or anything that they might need. So that's four shuttles in total per year for the lifespan of the space station. Now, this is creating a very important need, the need to recruit new astronauts. So all over China, there are a lot of people getting ready and getting prepared to go into the space station very soon. But very importantly, this recruitment is focused on getting astronauts from Hong Kong and Macau. This has been given a priority to include this um, special regions of China into this project because they want it to be Chinese. Now, this is not a space station that is only going to be for China. They want it to be an international space station as well, although everybody knows that it's the Chinese space station, as it says right there. <clears throat> but they have invited people from different countries to join their research and the investigation and their crews that are going to visit the space station. And up until this moment, there are up to 17 countries that have uh, joined the list expressing a desire to go to the space station, do some investigation, do some research, do some work, and we'll learn more about the things that we can um, improve here on Earth given the research that they do in space. So all in all, a very interesting project for the world, for humanity. And as we said, is the one that is going to be operational from 2024 as international. So guys, that's all the time that I wanted to show to you. So let's get back to Sarah. So see you in a bit, I'll go find her.